Almost every basic function we look at has what's called a parent function. What's a parent function? Well, it's basically a graph with the same shape and characteristics of more or less anything we'll see, just with some transformations to it. Maybe we'll shift parent graphs around, maybe we'll stretch them or reflect them somehow. Here are some things, some properties we'll be keeping in mind with these functions. We call a function odd if f of negative x equals negative f of x. What does that mean? Well, that means the function's graph is symmetric about the origin. If you took the graph, rotated it 180 degrees, it would be the exact same picture. We have so-called even functions, or even symmetry, if f of negative x equals regular f of x. This means the function symmetrical about the y-axis. We could flip it over the horizontal direction and it would be the same picture symmetrically. A very big idea for us is this idea of continuity. Continuous functions versus discontinuous functions. Now there are very formal definitions for these things. For you and me, we'll call a function continuous if we can draw its graph from left to right without picking up our pen or pencil. This line I drew is continuous. There are no breaks or gaps or holes or asymptotes of this line. It's a continuous curve. Whereas a discontinuous function has one of those things. Maybe it has a hole somewhere. Maybe if we drew a line here, if we drew some line, but ah, there was some gap or some break in it. Or maybe it spiked up to an asymptote all of a sudden. That could be a discontinuity as well. Any time we'd have to pick up our pen to continue drawing the function, that would make a discontinuity. We may also be very concerned whether a function is increasing or decreasing. We'll simply say a function is increasing. If we go more to the right, our function goes more up. So as we increase x, we also increase y. We'll say our function decreases. As we go farther to the right, we go down. Or as we increase x, we decrease y. You'll see what this looks like in a second with some pictures. Here we have one of the most famous and straightforward parent functions, the linear function f of x equals x. This is just a line. If you wanted to say y equals x, that would also be appropriate. Here's its graph, straight line through the origin, slope one. What are some characteristics about this? Well, this line, if we were to rotate it 180 degrees, it would actually be the same picture. That makes it an odd function. It's also continuous, right? We could draw this line straight away, left to right without picking up our pen. It's increasing. The farther we go to the right, the more up the graph goes, or the more we increase in x, the more we also increase in y. The domain and range are all real numbers. The function indeed stretches forever to the left and to the right, forever up and down. Next we have quadratic functions whose parent function is f of x equals x squared. These are those u-shaped functions, those upward facing u's, which give them that even symmetry. We could reflect this u, we could reflect this picture over the y-axis and it would be a mirror image. Fold it over itself and it would line up perfectly. It's also continuous. We could draw this u-shape left to right without picking up our pen. That's nice. We'll see many of our functions here. Our parent functions are indeed continuous. We have to worry a little bit about increasing and decreasing because our function going left to right is actually going down for a while. Until we hit zero, until we reach that turnaround point vertex, our function is decreasing on the interval minus infinity to zero. And all of a sudden we hit zero and we start bouncing back up. We start increasing after zero. So we're increasing on zero to infinity. Again, we can plug anything into this function. It stretches forever to the left and to the right. That makes our domain all real numbers. The range, that's cut off. This function only goes as low as zero. It just touches the x-axis and then goes up forever. So our range, y is a real number if y is positive, if y is greater than or equal to zero. If you wanted to do these in interval notation, the domain would be minus infinity to infinity. The range would be zero to infinity. We have to be a little careful. It's bracket zero because 
we actually do, in fact, hit the origin there. We touch y equals zero. Let's move on to cubic functions whose parent function is f of x equals x cubed. This is an odd function here. Rotate it or spin it 180 degrees, it's the exact same picture. It also looks like it's always increasing. From left to right, this function is always going up. The bigger we get x, the bigger output is y. It's also continuous. We can draw this without picking up our pencil. The domain is all real numbers, minus infinity to infinity. The range is also all real numbers, minus infinity to infinity. This graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right. A little bit more wild is the reciprocal function with parent function 1 over x. Keep in mind here, we have an x in the denominator. That x had better not be 0. So we're going to have that vertical asymptote at x equals 0. You can see that on this picture. This picture splits up and down along the y-axis. And in fact, it's also an odd function. Imagine spinning this function around 180 degrees, same picture. We have, for the first time, discontinuities. In fact, that asymptote gives us a discontinuity at x equals zero. We would have to pick up our pen. Imagine we started to draw this. Well, we'd draw left to right, and then we'd have to pick up our pen, kind of jump over the asymptote to draw the other half of this curve. So we certainly have a discontinuity for the first time. This function's always decreasing. Notice left to right, it's going down. And then we hop over the asymptote and it's, it's still going down. So this function, as we read it left to right, is always going down. It's always decreasing. Notice how we omitted zero. It's decreasing from minus infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, because we're not defined at zero, we have that asymptote. The domain is exactly the same. Minus infinity to zero, zero to infinity. It's everything except x equals zero. And the range is the same as well. Everything except y equals zero. That's because this function has also a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. This function never touches the x-axis. So our range and domain are slightly restricted with that discontinuity. Try not to get too riled up. I'm going to talk about radical functions here, or root functions, maybe we'll call them. f of x is the square root of x. Notice here, this picture is not odd or even. If we reflect it over the y-axis or rotate it 180 degrees, it is not the same picture. It's just sort of this swoosh out to the right and has no symmetry. Good to know. It is indeed continuous from zero to infinity. We could start at zero and draw this picture forever without picking up our pen. So it's continuous on its domain. Its domain is bracket zero to infinity. That's because we're not taking the square root of a negative real number. So we can do at least zero and plug in numbers after that. This function is only defined to the right of the y-axis. Its range is exactly the same, bracket zero to infinity. It only goes as low as the x-axis and it goes up forever. It's also always increasing on its domain. It's always going up as we read left to right. So it's increasing from zero to infinity. Starting to get crazy with exponential functions whose parent function is b to the x. We won't say b equals zero here. It's not odd or even. We'll see that on the picture. It's indeed continuous and always increasing. Look at this. As we read left to right, this function goes up and up forever. So we're increasing on our domain minus infinity to infinity. This function stretches forever to the left, forever to the right. The domain is minus infinity to infinity. We have to be a little careful with the range here. We only go as low as the x-axis. y equals zero. We have that horizontal asymptote. So the range is zero to infinity. The last parent function for us to look at are logarithmic functions with parent function f of x equals log base b of x. I'm not considering b to be zero. This is another case with no symmetry, but it is continuous on its domain. 
Here's the picture. This is the inverse function of the exponential functions. If we reflect it over the line y equals x, we get this. We'll soon see that this domain is zero to infinity. No coincidence that that was the range of the exponential function. The range here is minus infinity to infinity, stretches forever up and down. That was the domain of the exponential function. That's because we have this vertical asymptote now along the y-axis at x equals zero. This function is always increasing. As we read left to right, it's increasing on its domain zero to infinity. These are some great facts for some great parent functions. If you ever want to review, I would recommend coming back and watching again.